Hi, everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today, I am going to share about the theory of constraint and bottleneck management. Before watching, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. The theory of constraints was first described by Dr. Eliyahu M. Goldratt in his novel, The Goal, which was originally released in 1984. What is constraint? A constraint is anything that limits a system from achieving its goal or a level of performance desired. What is the bottleneck? A bottleneck represents processes or operations that have limited capacity or constraint. A bottleneck has the lowest effective capacity of any operation in the system and thus limits the system's output. To determine the bottleneck in a production system, simply identify the station with the slowest process time. The bottleneck time is the process time of the slowest workstation. In this case, process C is our bottleneck process is the process is the slowest workstation. Theory of constraints or names is TOC is a body of knowledge that deals with anything that limits or constrains an organization's ability to achieve its goals. The theory of constraints provides a specific methodology for identifying and eliminating constraints, referred to as the five focusing steps. As shown in the following diagram, it is a cyclical process. The five focusing steps are identifying the constraint, exploit the constraint, subordinate and synchronize to the constraint, elevate the performance of the constraint and repeat the process. Step 1. Identifying the constraint. A constraint is anything that limits a system from achieving its goal or a level of performance desired. Constraints can be physical such as process or personnel availability, raw materials, or supplies, or non-physical such as procedures, morale, and training. Step 2. Exploit the constraint. Improve the rate of the constraining process without undergoing expensive changes or upgrades. An example is to reduce or eliminate the downtime of bottleneck operations. Step 3. Subordinate and synchronize to the constraint. The non-constraint components of the system must be adjusted to a rate that will enable the constraint to operate at maximum effectiveness. Once this has been done, the overall system is evaluated to determine if the constraint has shifted to another component. Step 4. Elevate the performance of the constraint. If the constraint still exists, consider what further actions can be taken to eliminate it from being the constraint. Normally, actions are continued at this step until the constraint has been broken or removed. In some cases, capital investment may be required. Elevating a constraint might include adding more machines, or people, or shifts, or spending money for advertising, or hiring writers to create lead-generating web articles. Step 5. Repeat the process. The five focusing steps are a continuous improvement cycle. Therefore, once a constraint is resolved the next constraint should immediately be addressed. This step is a reminder to never become complacent, aggressively improve the current constraint and then immediately move on to the next constraint. Drum buffer rope DBR is a method of synchronizing production to the constraint while minimizing inventory and work in process. Drum is the constraint itself since it sets the drumbeat pace for the other processes. Also, the drumbeat signals the upstream operations what to produce and tells the downstream operations what to expect. Buffer is the stockpile of WIP in front of the constraint. It is a precaution to keep the constrained resource running at the highest possible capacity since it determines the output of the entire system. Typically, there are two buffers. Constraint buffer, immediately before the constraint, protects the constraint. Customer buffer, at the very end of the process, protects the shipping schedule. Rope is the limitations placed on production in upstream operations which are necessary to prevent flooding the constraint with excess work in progress WIP which are above its capacity. The rope is a signal generated by the constraint indicating that some amount of inventory has been consumed. This in turn triggers an identically sized release of inventory into the process. The role of the rope is to maintain throughput without creating an accumulation of excess inventory. 
In general terms, lean manufacturing focuses on eliminating waste whereas theory of constraints emphasizes on maximizing throughput. Nonetheless, the two approaches can be used together. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Bye. See you next time.